Welcome back to Jacques in the Garden. Today we are talking asparagus and specifically how to care for asparagus at the end of its season and the end of its growth cycle. And many of you know that asparagus is a long-lived perennial plant, can often live for over 20 years in your garden, continuously providing you that bountiful harvest of fresh asparagus spears every spring. So it's really important that you follow certain steps when you're pruning back your asparagus. And specifically, we'll talk about everything you need to know on how to manage your asparagus at the end of the season. Before we get deep into the care of the asparagus plant itself, I wanted to talk a little bit about this patch right here. This patch is now going into its second year, so it's two full years of age. And this was started as seedlings rather than transplanted from crowns. When I read up online about asparagus, everything I saw seemed to suggest that starting from seedlings will actually give you a earlier harvest than the crowns. Now, this is kind of interesting because the crown should be a more established older plant, but for whatever reason, the seedling seems to be more vigorous and to take and I'll tell you what, I've had quite the harvest in my second year, and most people usually say you have to wait two years before your harvest, but I found that to not be the case. You can see that this plant has gone quite massive, even though I harvested all throughout the second year. Now I did stop towards the end of spring and allowed those final spears to turn into this monstrosity here. And what you see at the very tip of the asparagus plant is actually the plant itself. So this all unfurls from that little fruffly part at the top of the asparagus, and it turns into this massive fern like structure that could be well over five feet. <laughs> like this one here is probably close to six feet in height. So it's really important that you let this happen because what this is acting as is essentially is a solar panel battery bank. And this plant is absorbing all of that sun's energy and shooting it down into the roots below to provide you those spears in the spring. So it's really important that you let your plant grow out. But when do you actually cut it back? Let's talk about that next. Before we get into the maintenance and care, I wanted to point out what these bamboo stakes are that you see. And they're just acting as a simple floor to weave. All I've done is wrap some twine around the fronts and backs of them. There's actually quite a bit more bamboo in there that you just can't see behind this massive wall of green. And all it's acting to do is keep my plants upright so they're not flopping all over the place. I highly recommend you do that. I probably did at some point in late summer and it's really tidied up the patch quite a bit and allowed me to actually grow something in this bed rather than having all the ferns collapse into it. So with that being said, let's move on to the first care tip. The perfect time to cut back your asparagus is once it's fully turned brownish yellow like this frond right here. So this is an example of a fully dyed back asparagus. You can see that it has lost pretty much all of its color in terms of the green. And you can tell right here that a large section of this plant has started to die back into that brown yellowish color. Now you might be noticing that over here it's still quite vibrant and green, but what I've noticed upon closer inspection is that every single part of this plant that is green like this is entirely loaded with aphids. So I have a few options here. I could just wait until the perfect time, which is when it's fully like this, but if I did that, these aphids would be sucking up all those nutrients anyway. So I've decided that now is the right time to actually cut this back. Why is it so important for you to wait until these plants have turned brown like this? Well, because as I mentioned earlier, this plant is acting essentially as a solar bank with the battery being the roots down below. So as this plant dies back, turns brown and yellow, all that green energy is focused back down into the roots to feed those roots to provide you that bountiful harvest come springtime. If you were to cut this back while it was fully green, say even a month or two ago, you would have just handicapped your entire harvest for the year because all that energy is now lost instead of being stored in the roots. Now, as I mentioned, this is fully entirely covered with aphids, so many aphids that I've never actually seen this many aphids before. So I'm making the decision to cut it back slightly early. If I waited maybe two more weeks or three weeks, probably would have turned a lot more brown, but I think those aphids are gonna introduce more disease pressure and they're also going to be sucking up all that nutrients anyway. So rather than let them take that win, I'm going to go ahead and cut this back early. Now there is something very crucial that you wanna make sure to do with the cutback asparagus plant. So make sure you follow this next step. Earlier in the year, I put up a video where I actually transplanted some new asparagus ferns in. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those because they're still quite green and small. I don't really wanna cut them back too early. This is a great time, by the way, to look for female asparagus plants. It's totally optional to remove them, but I talk about why I like to remove them in a previous video that I'll link at the end. Basically, they produce seeds and those seeds can drop down, self-seed and create a very crowded asparagus patch. So I personally prefer to remove them, but some people like to leave them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting back and I'll mention a couple things, especially if you're in a cold climate that are important. If you do live in an area that gets heavy snow, you will wanna actually consider not cutting it back because these will act as insulation, capturing snow and keeping your whole patch warmer. 
So in a climate like this, <laughs> obviously you don't get any snow. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them all the way down to the soil level. So that's half the patch removed and you probably saw all that crazy dust flying. Those were all the carcasses of aphids. Like I said, there are a absolute ridiculous load of aphids in this asparagus and everything here is coated in almost like multiple millimeter thick layer of aphid. So I think I made the right decision here. <laughs> You can see the stumps of the asparagus here, but before I trim this down, let's go ahead and bring down this last patch right over here. And I'm absolutely covered in aphids, so I'm definitely taking a shower right after this video. The last thing I'm gonna do here before we move on to the next part is trim these stumps down to the soil level using my little hand pruners. Just make quick work of this. We wanna get pretty much down to the soil level here because we're going to be amending it and adding some compost. Now all the asparagus has been cut essentially to the soil level, maybe just right above it. And the other thing you might notice here is that there are some strawberries kind of mixed in throughout this asparagus patch. Strawberries are considered a good companion plant with asparagus, but honestly, I found that the asparagus grew so big that the strawberries never got any light and never really produced. But since they're going so well, I'm going to go ahead and leave them here. I'm just going to dust off some of that aphid dust because uh, there's quite a bit of that. But the next thing we're going to do is haul this giant pile of asparagus out into the driveway and move over to the compost bin. And it's really important that you actually pay attention in this next step. I'm actually surprised I was able to get that all into one wheelbarrow load. But this next step is really important because there is a very particular pest for asparagus and it's called the asparagus beetle. Now the asparagus beetle loves living in the actual growth of the plant itself and will overwinter only to return in the spring and decimate your asparagus. So if you are 100% sure that you have no asparagus beetle, you can go ahead and chop and drop this right onto your asparagus patch. But if you know you have asparagus beetle or if you're not entirely certain, I would recommend just hauling it off and composting it separately, which is exactly what I'm going to do because I'm not really entirely sure that I don't have the asparagus beetle in here. I haven't really been that thorough about checking for it. So maybe we'll throw up a picture of what it looks like. And if you've seen that before, just go ahead and straight away either dispose of it in the green bin or throw it in your compost. I'm not gonna sit here and chop this up painstakingly and show you guys that. But the idea is that I'll come through, cut this up into little bits and throw it into my compost pile. It should provide a nice little boost of greens in this late winter season where that's honestly pretty hard to come by. So now let's go back over to the asparagus patch and talk about how to prepare it for next spring. The compost has now been fully applied to this bed and I've added maybe one to two inches across the entire layer. And basically the main thing I was trying to do was cover all those cut ends entirely in compost to make sure that they're totally buried. And if you are in that colder climate where you're not cutting down your asparagus until that springtime, that's when you could actually apply your compost. You'll still get plenty of benefit from that application because that'll break out down through that summer and feed your soil through the winter for that next season. So you're just going to be doing it in a sort of different timeline. You could also add nitrogen fertilizer. Asparagus in particular does respond to nitrogen really well. So if you want a little bit of that early harvest, you can, or that bigger harvest, I should say, you can fertilize, but it's not totally necessary. I found that even from a small patch like this, we get plenty of spears to eat throughout that springtime. Now, the only other thing I'll say is that in terms of watering, you wanna just basically keep it moist. I'm not gonna probably water at all. This compost is a little bit wet already. Not really that wet, honestly. I might wet it down a little bit, but you just wanna essentially stop this bed from drying out. Come springtime, that's when you're gonna to wanna to pick up the watering, and that's also when you're going to want to mulch it. You can mulch it now as well, but I'm going to choose to leave it like this, just because, I don't know, I don't really have that much mulch handy, to be honest. <laughs> so that's it for the asparagus, guys. If you follow these steps, you will probably get a wonderful harvest of spears. Just make sure you let your plant grow into its full maturity to get all that wonderful sunlight energy down into the roots. And I'll see you guys in springtime when it's time to harvest.